guys, welcome back. I was reading some comments from my last two videos and I had questions from some friends of mine. So thank you, you know who you are. Their questions were in regards to brushes. I wanted to keep this pretty streamlined. Just talk about like basic brushes to have, even for somebody who's maybe new to makeup, doesn't really wear much, but they're kind of confused. I think first off, I'll have to say one of the best tools is your fingers. You can kind of feel how the skin is reacting to the products. You can feel different zones in the face, maybe areas where you might maybe more dry or flaky. So you can really feel what's happening when you use your fingers. I also have some great tools that I really, really enjoy just for like my everyday. My professional kit, of course, has a huge selection, different materials, some that are more of a natural hair and then some that are synthetic. I really, really enjoy synthetic brushes for your cream products, your liquid products. You can even find some great ones for powder products as well. They're affordable. This is the real techniques. They're all synthetic. The price point is amazing. I feel like this is a basic set. They actually have a few different sets you can get. You get four to five brushes. They have eye sets. They have complexion sets. This is great for complexion, but you can also use these guys as eyeshadow brushes. You can use them for concealing, all sorts of different things. So this is kind of one of my favorite sets for myself. I use this for my foundation. I have been known to use it for moisturizers, anything kind of liquidy or cream with this. I would say to people who aren't quite sure where to start, I think it's great to get a little set of synthetic brushes that you can use and experiment. Like I like this one for my foundation. It has a nice surface. You can do like a stippling motion, a pushing motion in areas that you feel like you need more coverage. And then you can also do a nice buffing motion from there just to kind of shear things out. This one is actually really great for um, under eye for concealing. Once you've concealed, you want to make sure you set that so it stays in place. So you can use this with a little bit of powder. This is also actually really great for contouring. Cream products, I really love with these, but I'm going to actually go in and I'm going to just do a really simple makeup look. And then I'll kind of continue along and talk about what, what brush I'm using. Uh, I'm not really talking about the products today. I'm really mainly kind of trying to focus on basic brushes like 101. I'm just going to go in. I already prepped my skin and I'm going to take my little buffing brush and just buff that out. I like a little bit more coverage right through the center, but with this brush, it makes it really easy just to be kind of quick. Using your fingers for your foundation is also great. You can kind of um, push and really feel the product working in the skin. I also love this little synthetic brush. Beauty blenders are great, or complexion sponges. I like them actually a little bit damp, so you can really like work the product into the skin. You can also use them dry with your powder products. I also say don't be afraid to kind of experiment. I find when the sponge is a little bit damp, it almost kind of hydrates the skin and kind of works that product into the skin a little bit. So there is a little quick foundation buffing brush, real techniques. I think it's great also to have a nice big brush for powders, for bronzers, anything that you want to apply kind of in a soft diffused way. You can also get sets, you know, a lot of people like this one's from MAC. A lot of people come out with like the brush sets. I think those are great, but honestly, a professional long handle applies products a little bit lighter because the pressure, the idea is you want to hold further back to lighten the pressure. The further you come, that's going to really almost intensify whatever it is you're applying. Moving your position on where your hand is on your brush will also dictate how the product is going to be placed on the on the skin. And then a good fluffy brush for your blush. Like this guy, I can use for blush as well, like a cream blush, but I can use a cream blush with this as well. Just find a blush brush that feels comfortable to you. I'm just doing a little concealing under my eyes. I had a pretty long couple the last two weekends, tons of weddings. So I am a little disheveled <laughs> today, but whatever. I'm like, you know, let me film that, that video that we're asking about. Let's talk brushes. And then I'm gonna basically take this guy. So you can use it for contouring, for blush, for powders. I'm just kind of pushing and then just gently kind of sweeping. I'm gonna go straight in with the same brush. Sometimes I even like to just wipe out the brush, get that product off of there. And I'm gonna actually just take this and dip this in a tiny bit of powder to set that concealer right away. So I'm showing you this brush is also versatile. And 
you know, sometimes I'll have like three of the same brush because I like one for cream. I like one for powders. I like one to maybe just have an extra on hand if I haven't washed my brushes. You can kind of see, I mean, that's just, I mean, I use that already for two products. I am somebody who kind of likes to wipe my brushes out a little bit, get some of that product off before they're just sitting and I put them back in there little brush holder. Little Trader Joe's. <laughs> Your orchids come in these. Save them. So next let's go in and use these ones that I was talking about. I'm going to go in with this nice big full brush from MAC. So you can pat, which sometimes I like to do so I don't disturb like the foundation that I put on. Or you can just buff. Again, I think having a couple brushes is really all you need. Something fluffy, something maybe a little bit more dense. Um, that way you keep your bronzer or whatever maybe you're using to kind of warm your complexion up. You're keeping it kind of applied nice and light. The smaller the brush, the denser the brush, the fuller the product will be. So but I just kind of warmed up the outer edges. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the MAC. What is this one? The 129. Just taking a little bit of a blush and just tapping that on right on the apples. I use this one so much. I mean, it's already like kind of formed to my cheek. <laughs> Kind of see how I've worn it over the handful of years I've had this. I'll dampen my beauty blender or a complexion sponge. Like I got these ones at Ulta. They're great. And I just kind of push and I feel like this kind of rehydrates your skin and it also picks up like any extra product that might be sitting and I feel like it just kind of works everything in. And you can go in if you feel like you're on the drier side and you really just want to like work your foundation in. Sometimes I'll go in with my, my brush and then go right in with my beauty blender after I've got it all buffed in. And then I'll just make sure to just kind of go in, really push the product in and if this will grab any extra too. Everything's blended. So this, this guy, Something to set maybe with powders is always great or a contour brush. But if you get that set, it's just pretty easy. You can kind of just experiment and see how you like to use the brush. I don't really feel like there's rules, but I feel like there's basics everybody should have. A big brush, blush brush, like that right there, that's complexion products. If that's kind of your only thing that you do, then you're good. Take care of your brushes. You know, they should last you a good five to seven years. Key brush right here for your brows. I always find before we go into eyes, I kind of like to define the brows because sometimes that's just enough. All you need is some mascara. The Anastasia little double ended. I think this is the 7B. I love this. It's got a little angled brush. So you can go in with a little bit of a brow powder or if you just have like a taupe brown shadow that I feel like is a universal color for a brow. So you can go in and just like for me when I fill in my brows it's really mainly like this front section and then like back through here. And then you've got the little spoolie on the end. That's really important. You just really want to like blend all that together so the brows look nice and natural. And she's making makes pretty much the best brow products anyways. Double-ended brushes are kind of fun. You can use this for blush, for powders, for creams, anything. You've got a, a pointed tip, so this is actually kind of great to just kind of get in and maybe do a little contouring in this guy for blush. So that's a good alternative if you want like a two for one. Storing those, a little bit more tricky. Kind of want to lay them flat or have maybe a brush roll that you keep your brushes in. Eyeshadow brushes that I think are really key. Something fluffy, soft, little dome shape. This is a great blending brush. This is just going to really soften all your edges out. I feel like this is one I gravitate to towards a lot because I do like my eye, my eyeshadows to look nice and blended. This is a go-to for me. I have a couple of these for myself and then I have tons for my kit. I use that a lot. I also love this fluffy little brush. This particular one is from Morphe, but I do like the one from MAC. But again, price point, I feel like Morphe brushes, you can find some really good brushes and good quality that'll do the trick. This guy is actually fluffy, so it's gonna do kind of what this does. This guy's a little softer, a little bit more flexible. So this is a great blending crease brush. This too, very fluffy on the top, but it has this density to it. With that, this is going to be actually even great for, this is a really great multi-purpose because this is going to be really stiff enough to like pack if you really want to intensify a color, you can go in first and really place that product where you want it, intensify it, use the tip, just buff it out. Blending, this is a good blending brush. And then this is also a really good shading or packing brush. So something fluffy like this, I still think these two are key. I would say what would be missing from that, 
a detail brush. These two, it's a dome shaped brush. These are really nice for, let's say if you're only using two shadows and your darkest one, you wanna kind of create an eyeliner, but you still want it to be soft without having to go in and grab a pencil. You can take this little brush with whatever the darker shadow is and really use this to give the illusion of an eyeliner, but it's much softer with your eyeshadows. As ladies, we will have a bunch of eyeshadow palettes and there's like two that we use out of like the six. If there's darker colors and you just are afraid to touch them and you haven't, this is a good way to go in with that darker color and just like softly blend and just work it into the lash line. Maybe also intensify it against the top lash line. These are really great at buffing, blending, doing detail work. Also like inner corner, just to brighten. That's a really, really good little trick. And then I also think it's great to have an angled brush, something you can do a little bit of eyeliner with. You can dampen the brush and then actually just work it into the lash line. Detail brushes are an essential tool, but if you had to start somewhere, I would say soft, fluffy brushes, one that's a little bit more dense that you can actually pack your shadow with. These other ones are just like kind of bonus if you feel like you just need a little bit more options. These I would say are, you know, a base all over shadow brush. They're gonna pack the color on that you want either on the lid or let's say you're swiping all over. So this would be like your shading brushes and then your crease blending brushes. This is from MAC. They have two different sizes, one smaller, which I actually really like for doing a little bit of liner work sometimes. This one's a little softer. So sometimes if you have maybe something that has a softer texture or a lot of shimmer and you really wanna make sure you see that, this is gonna be a really nice one because it holds the, the actual little shimmer particles a little bit better. I'm just gonna take the bronzer that I used today and I'm gonna show you how to use these two guys. I'm gonna take the white one, which is again, more dense and I'm pushing this on. If you have a favorite bronzer, use it as an eyeshadow. I'm all about like taking a product, kind of maximizing it. Use your use your bronzer as, as your eyeshadow and you kind of have like a nice cohesive look. So I'm just, I'm not worried about getting it like perfectly blended. I'm just kind of pushing. Again, this little fluffy brush really just packs that color on. I'm gonna wipe it out. I'm gonna take this fluffy guy clean and I'm just, I'm not taking from the lower section. I'm like right where it meets the naked portion of my eye. And I'm just gonna like soften this and then just really lightly, like the pressure is really light. And two, I'm holding far, pretty far back. And let's go in and fluffy brush again. You can actually use the tip. I could use the detail brush here, but I want my look to be a little bit more diffused. I'm gonna use this underneath. Sometimes I'll even just close my eye, just kind of like run it into the lash line. So my friend Katie commented on a brush that I used in my very first video, and I'm not sure exactly which one you were referring to, so just maybe send me a comment or you can direct message me through my Instagram and I can tell you exactly which brush it was and specifically maybe why I chose that one. The brushes that I'm showing today are a really great basic brush that is a good starter for anybody. Next, I'm just gonna sh do a little bit, this little detail brush. This is a cream product. I just kinda wanna highlight that little inner spot in my eye. So this is, would be like a detail, laying it down. Just pushing that in, just kind of brightens that corner a little bit under the brow. Just to pick up a little bit of white here. I'll even do the lid just to kind of maybe pick up a little bit of white right there. And again, your fingers are such a good way of blending products. I find that's kind of how I like to use my fingers is not the the initial way of applying. I'll either go in with a brush and then I'll go in with my fingers and really kind of work the product in, whether it's the skin or the eyes. I'm just gonna show you how to use this little guy. I told you you could use it for earlier powders, creams, contour, all sorts of things. I'm gonna use this little liquid uh, kind of creamy blush. This is from Becca. It's very concentrated. So I'm just gonna take this into a liquid blush, like the Glossier blushes that everybody loves. You can use your fingers or you can use a little synthetic brush so you can maybe be a little bit more precise on your, your application. And I just kind of buff that and take the rest and just pop a little bit up on this top section of my eyes. 
I'm going to use that on my lips too. As far as lip brushes go, I think they're great for professional makeup artists or let's say you're wearing a really intense lip, something bright, and you really need precise. I think that's a good way to apply, but most people aren't going to use a lip brush. I will say though, when you do use a lip brush, you apply it thinner, the, the product, and so it creates a little bit more of a stain. Another tool that I really think people should at least have in their tool bag is a lash curler to give your lashes a little bit of a lift. I told you I was going to tell you about another mascara. <laughs> I mean, guess what's next to it? Always. For my professional makeup kit, I'm, I, I can't afford a $30 mascara that's going to dry out in six weeks. So, Lash Paradise. This one I love, and I like the formula. It's nice and volumizing, so I feel like I really was liking the L'Oreal Voluminous for quite a while. I feel like this is taking the cake. So if you're looking for a cheapie, this is a goodie. I like this one for the bottom always because it doesn't run or smudge. I feel like that's, that's good. Something like these, a detail brush of some sort. If you want to intensify a couple different colors and you're using multiple shades, I think a nice flat shader brush is always great to have. Everybody is going to have um, different advice on brushes. I just think for most women, it's just great to have a few complexion brushes. I think it's nice to have a, an option as far as a beauty sponge really kind of use that in where it's kind of damp so it kind of really adds a little bit of extra hydration into the skin even when you put it on your face and it's kind of damp it feels so nice the thing I would also recommend is cleaning your brushes I would say clean them at least twice a month if you can you can be as diligent as you want they're your brushes for me, I have this one because it actually uses uh, coconut milk and it's really nice because it doesn't dry out your brushes and it cleans them really, really well, especially anything that is um, a synthetic brush. Uh, but you just swirl a little bit, get your brush damp. I always kind of do like lukewarm and then I just swirl a little bit and this is like a solid basically shampoo and I just swirl it in my hands and you'll see all that product kind of draw out and then rinse it really well under the water. Squeeze it out, get all the excess out. A lot of times I'll even take like um, a towel and just kind of push and then lay f flat to dry. And sometimes even like over an edge, like your counter, so the air circulates. So let me know if you guys have any questions. If you have favorite brushes that you like or a favorite brand, I will link down below in my descriptions the products that I've talked about and the brushes I've talked about. Um, specifically, I'll have more of the, that detailed under there. Let me know if you guys have any other ideas, if there's anything else that you want to pick my brain about. It's really helpful to have feedback to my 47 subscribers. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Please share with your friends, comment, like. Definitely hit the notification bell because that'll at least let you know when I'm uploading. I'm trying to do a video a week or a video every Every couple weeks and like I said this is something new I'm really having fun with and I just would love to hear any feedback you guys have thank you uh, like subscribe and I'll see you soon thank you all my favorites